Hey, what's up guys, Sean here, and today we're gonna to be talking about the Automatic Boost for Communities Act, which is the newest proposal that lawmakers are trying to push in order to put even more money into your pocket each and every single month. I'm talking about an additional $2,000 plus an additional $1,000 each and every single month for at least a year until this pandemic ends. So we're gonna be talking about how is this even possible? What is it? Who is eligible? How are they gonna distribute the funds? How can the funds be spent? And one of my big questions is, how the heck are we gonna be paying for all this? Sounds like a lot of money. And I guess also how we're going to be finding the people to make sure that every single person gets it. And also my kind of thoughts on why this could actually be really great, but also a lot of my concerns and why I kind of think this may be a little bit of a disaster. But before we get into it, make sure you smash that like button for me, hit the subscribe button, that little notification bell means the world to me. But without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so the newest proposal being pushed to get more monies into our pocket is the Automatic Boost for Communities Act. Now, the reason this is being pushed is because as you know, the government and lawmakers so far have tried to do different things during this pandemic to help with our uh, income, to help with financial aid during this process because millions upon millions of people have been laid off and furloughed, hours have been reduced, and we are in a time that we've, we've never seen before. So we're trying to figure out how do we handle all this. And so we've done some things in the past. We've given everybody a $1,200 stimulus check, which is part of the Phase 3 CARES Act, which I have in a link below. So make sure you check that video out. And we've also done other things like extending unemployment benefits, the, the amount of time that you can collect unemployment. The federal government's also provided an extra $600 a week for those who are unemployed up until the end of July. But there's still some problems with that. For some people, it's still not as much as they were making before. For some people, they have not been able to get a hold of unemployment for the last month or two, sometimes even three months, depending on when you were unemployed, and they have no income coming in, and they can't get a hold of unemployment. And not to mention the fact that the $600 a week, that's only until the end of July. Let's face it, this is probably gonna be going on for quite a while, and what is it we're gonna do after the $600 a week is over, after we've spent the $1,200 stimulus check and we're only receiving a small amount of unemployment from the state. So what does it entail actually? Here are the details on it, and this is basically the idea behind it, is that every single person would be receiving a prepaid debit card with a loaded $2,000 on it. Now, in addition to a preloaded $2,000 debit card, we would also be receiving an additional $1,000 a month loaded onto that card each and every single month for at least a year until this pandemic subsides. Now, a lot of things go into this. So the first question is, who does this benefit? The idea behind this act was that we want no person left behind. They want some sort of a guarantee that no matter what happens, that no person's left behind during this pandemic. And so the people who are eligible are the following. Taxpayers. We have dependents, non-citizens, individuals without a bank account, individuals without a social security number, individuals without a permanent address, and people living in unincorporated territory and Americans living abroad. So that basically covers about every single person. Now, how does this look for, let's say if you have a family versus uh, if you're just a single person? Well, the way it would work is this. Let's say you're a family of four. You've got the two spouses and you've got two kids. Essentially, a family of four would receive four debit cards with a preloaded $2,000 onto those cards. So those four cards, $2,000, that would mean that you would receive $8,000 to your family. Now, if you're a single person, you would only be receiving one debit card with $2,000 on it. So it would be given one to every single person. Now, what happens if you're a non-citizen? If you're a non-citizen, that's someone with, with, with a permanent address, someone with an undocumented individual or a temporary visitor who's been staying here at least three months or longer, you'd be getting a preloaded debit card with at least $1,000 each and every single month until the emergency ends. Now, how does this actually kind of work? How do we find all these people? Because let's face it, there are hundreds of millions of people in, this, in the uh, United States. How do you find all these people? The proposal calls for the U.S. Treasury to be in working with all kinds of government agencies, uh, state, local, federal levels in order to become and create one of the largest and most comprehensive lists that's ever been created. And so they're gonna be working together with the IRS, 
the Social Security Administration, the Federal Election Commission, and pretty much every other relevant federal, state, and local government agency. So on the state level and also places like the DMV to make sure that every single person is found and can be given an opportunity to have this money and have a guarantee to not be left behind during this crisis. So the next question is, how is this getting distributed to everybody? That's a lot of people to find and how then do you get all this money to them? So like I said, they're gonna be putting this money on a pre-loaded debit card. And there's a reason why they're doing this instead of checks. I believe they probably thought about like, hey, a lot of people don't have access to banks. A lot of people don't have access to check cashing. So if you give someone cash and they don't have a bank, they can't get check cashing services, what are they gonna do with that check? And there's basically gonna be three ways in which you can receive this debit card. The first one is going to be direct mail. There's gonna be in-person pickup. And there's also gonna be an at-risk outreach. So this is for direct mail. All individuals with an active address on file would, would get sent a debit card via USPS. For the in-person pickup, these would be people without a permanent address, so a card would not be able to be mailed to them. Uh, it's also people with a permanent address, but maybe for some reason you don't have access or you don't want the thing mailed to you. It's also be for undocumented individuals and temporary visitors, but an in-person pickup would be a designated area in which you could go to and get issued your card. There's also the at-risk outreach one. And I don't know too much about this, but it sounds like they're gonna have, once again, some way for people who are elderly, homeless, disabled, and those in basically remote rural areas that are hard to get a hold of, to have some way of also giving them their cards as well. Now, the next question that I have is, how can these funds be used? So, so what, you have a debit card, but what can I actually do with this card? Is it limited certain things or what? Basically, it's a $2,000 prepaid debit card and you can use it for online businesses and stores. You can use it for stores in person and you can also take that debit card to an ATM machine and do cash withdrawals. So essentially, this money is yours. Use it however you need and want. My advice is make sure you use it on your basic essentials first. Here's the big kicker, and this is the question that I really had is, who the heck is paying for all this? Because let's face it, usually when you have a proposal or a bill or something like this being passed, where a bunch of stimulus is being put into the economy, it's being paid by taxpayers, right? I mean, money does not just come from nowhere. And if it is just printed from nowhere, usually you see hyperinflation, or of course they're gonna have to get the money back from uh, an increase in taxes at some point. So how is this actually going to be funded? Because what's most fascinating about all this is apparently it's not going to be adding to our national debt. And so as soon as I heard that, I started thinking like, wait a second, like debt doesn't make any sense. Like who is going to be paying for this? The idea is, is that this would be funded by the U.S. Treasury with no additional debt and it would be issued through two platinum bullion coins, each valued at one trillion dollars. Now. Title 31 of the U.S. Code gives Treasury sec uh, Security authority to mint bullion coins. Idea behind this is that they would mint at least two bullion coins worth $1 trillion each, and then they have the power and the ability to then mint more bullion coins if needed. This is where it gets kind of fuzzy, a little gray, and from my best understanding how this works, I'm going to explain it to you, is basically that you have the U.S. Treasury that's going to create and mint two bullion coins at $1 trillion each. And then what's gonna happen is that they, we set this value that, hey, these two coins are worth a trillion dollars each. Then the federal government is going to be, actually give money to the Federal Reserve or the US Treasury in exchange for those bullion coins. And now they actually have two coins worth one trillion dollars each. And then they can use that money in order to inject it into the economy. Now, if you're as kind of like, wait, what as I am, then yes, <laughs> this makes uh, not a lot of sense to me, but it is basically just like really like fancy trickery, uh, you know, accounting at this point. It's basically kind of like, okay, let's take, you know, let's create this thing that we're going to give some value to. We're going to have some way of giving, you know, some form of like money or something that's not really real for it. But now we actually have two things that actually have value. So now we actually can inject that into the economy and not add any additional debt it's very kind of weird it's like some weird jedi voodoo like magic stuff going on it's just like some really odd accounting um i'm still not entirely 100 sure exactly how it works i find it to be a little fishy in my opinion um but 
hey, you know, um, I'm gonna look into it further and maybe give you some updates when I can. If you do understand a lot more in detail, leave a comment below, wanna hear about it. Um, let's make sure we kind of educate each other, make sure we're doing the best we can. That's basically this, this uh, Automatic Boost for Proposals Act in a nutshell. I think it could be really awesome. And let's face it, this pandemic's probably gonna be going on for a little while. You know, mo some states are starting to open back up, but there's a lot of controversy on if it's too early or not. And whether it is too early or not, there's a pretty high likelihood that we're probably going to have another phase and another round of this virus kind of push. And we may have a high likelihood of going back into another stay at home order at some sort in the future. And so let's just face it, while the government and, and lawmakers have tried to pass some things and they have passed some things to help us, most of these are pretty short time frames, and this is probably gonna go on for a while. So we're gonna need some form of stimulus, some form of extra monetary help throughout this process because $1,200 is not gonna cut it for long term. And the $600 a week federal money that was given for extended unemployment benefits, that's only to the end of July. That's actually coming up pretty soon. And if this keeps going on, most people are not gonna have the income to sustain themselves. So what are your thoughts on this? Is this something that's good? How much do you think uh, that people should get? Should everybody get this? Or should maybe only certain people get it? I wanna hear your comments below. Uh, make, so make sure you do that. Like I said, hit that like button, smash that for me hit the subscribe button as well. And that little notification bell means the world to me. But I hope this gave you some value, gave you some insight. Kind of stay tuned, we'll see what happens. Uh, in my opinion, I don't think we're gonna be getting all that. I don't know if we're gonna get $2,000 plus an additional $1,000 a month. I'm sure there's gonna be some sort of really strict regulation. Uh, it's gonna be only for certain people who probably can prove you know, certain you know, forms of unemployment. Uh, I'm sure there's gonna be certain age categories because does a five-year-old need $2,000, uh, you could say, well, well, the parents could use it for them, and that is probably true. So, but I'm sure there's gonna be some back and forth um, between lawmakers on the left and the right and uh, everything as far as like, you know, how much should we be giving, who all should be getting it? But leave your comments below, stay safe, stay well, uh, reach out if you need anything, and we'll catch you on the next one.